Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, the interview part with Jim Tunney, the president of Future Wrestling. And, of course, I'm alongside my broadcast partner, Scotty Bear. Yeah, I'm here, finally. Yeah, yeah, I'm here, too. I'm a very busy man, so I don't I don't know what jobs you guys have worked before where you get to interview your managers and just dick around. But, you know, for some reason, I you talked me into this shit, so... Uh, what, whatever. Let's just let's just get on with this. I have events to book. I have people to sign. I'm trying to sign, you know, all the stars away from these little mud show promotions. So for the love of God, keep this quick. Jesus. Okay. Well, Jim Tunney, it's good to have you here. And um, the first question is, that what is the future for FOW? Any any brand new brand new special is coming. Of course they're specials. Everything's going on inside this head right now. Fuck. The plan, as we all know going forward, is to bring the absolute best of professional wrestling, not sports entertainment, not combat, pirouettes and ballet and predetermined bullcrap. True, good, amazing, spectacular professional wrestling, stuff people haven't seen before, and bringing all the talent in to make it happen. So, of course, there are special events planned. And I actually have a event planner to fire because who the hell has a Stalingrad show hosted in friggin' New York? So I have to take care of that eventually. But regardless of all this, I'm going out there every day trying to sign the biggest names, the biggest talents. And of course, I'm not going to waste it on an interview such as this because we have to keep it interesting for the actual shows, don't we? That is. Oh. I, I've been hearing some rumors. TikTok, on, boys. TikTok. Let's go. I've been hearing some rumors on um, the Instagrams and the Twitters. Uh, uh, we're going to have a Piper's Memorial Cup tournament. Oh, yes, we are. See, the best mouth, as we all know, in the history of professional wrestling was Rowdy Roddy Piper. So what better way to celebrate him than to get some of the biggest stars of not only Future of Wrestling, but maybe some surprise entrants that we haven't seen here yet before, all coming together in his honor, cutting the best promos, putting on the best matches for the best fans in the world, of course, of Future of Wrestling. Could you say any of those possible surprises yet, or are you still waiting for deals to get done? Deals are still in the works. I am still making phone calls, talking to managers, and really just putting out buckets of money. But since we're bringing in all the money, it's basically I can do whatever I want at this point. So, let's just say, while they're not done deals yet, they're basically done deals. Captain High Pants over here, jeez. Look, I'm the president of this company. I have to bring the hype. If I'm not going to do it, who is? You, Scotty? Tripping over yourself during all the shows? We're going to have words. Okay, okay. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. Okay, so... um... By Let's the way, Mark Donovan, Mark Donovan, great signing by me. I'm just going to pat myself right now. So, you know, we're bringing a little class over to this announce table. I mean, you boys, you, you do your job. But, you know, okay. we have to bring the true talent in here. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah, like that other referee you hired before. I get the best reps in the world. It's not my <laughs> fault that he lied and said he was one of those replacements from the NFL if he's back. So he lied to me. I did my vetting. But... Sometimes things fall through the cracks. When you're as busy as I am, sometimes things happen. Well, at least we got him fired. Oh, did we ever. I hope he's banned from the arenas. I mean, he was smoking in front of a little six-year-old, for Christ's sake. Nah, I mean, you know, it's it's not always a kiddie show. So sometimes things happen. He sometimes tried I to poison me. Real. He tried to poison me one time. Yes, like I said, sometimes things happen. Look, we bring a different kind of product here, something that you don't see before. So, much like the WWE, if one of your announcers happens to almost drop dead, then we have to one-up it by actually having one drop dead on our show. It's very simple. Oh, I wonder where I heard that before. Okay, okay. Moving on to the stardom card. uh, Why did you book uh, a match like AJ Styles and Cody? Well, it's all just comes down to having two of the best workers in the world right now go at it with each other. And it's all about the storytelling, as it normally is. And it just writes itself. You have the guy who is the king of the indies, 
who went to the biggest promotion in the world and then came to even the biggest one, which is obviously Future of Wrestling, versus the one who started in the formerly biggest promotion in the world and became the king of the indies. It basically, what what story do you have to tell? They all have a chip on their shoulder. They're all trying to prove that they are the best. And it's really the battle of mainstream versus indies at this point. It's a lot of pride. Definitely is a lot of pride. Um, now, I know you have booked CM Punk and Jay Lethal in a best of seven series. Oh, of course. You have to get two of the most entertaining wrestlers in the planet and really how you're going to do better than cm punk and jay lethal so i know i don't want to just sit through one match i would love for it to go for the full seven matches hell i could hire a referee to make sure it goes to the full seven matches but i'm not because we're not phony but it's the kind of thing where i know what the people want the box office numbers show that i know what the people want and when i say i want cm punk and jay lethal to push themselves to the limit out there at the biggest show we've ever put on they're going to go out there and they're going to put themselves on the line. And you know what? They're gladly do it too. Because if CM Punk truly is the best in the world, he's going to have to prove it. Is there anything at the end of the best of seven, like a number one contendership or something like that? Nothing's quite in the works just yet, but let's just say they're going to move their self up the ladder in the company with, I mean, how could you not? If you put on a show like that and the fans get behind you, maybe if you sell more T-shirts after that, then maybe you'll get some more chances. Let's just say scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. I wonder where I heard that one, too. Okay. You know, Scott, sometimes you just you just run me the wrong way, Scott. Mm. wonder and where I heard that from, too. Uh, you know what? It's going to be funny when you hear the where's my paycheck. So keep it up. So, Jim, uh, another question is... Um, That's Mr. Tunney to your boss. Mr. Tunney, um, what is your thoughts on what Paul Heyman decided to do by putting the Dangerous Alliance together, Walter and Lars Sullivan? Well, it's Paul Heyman doing what he always does. He goes to every promotion. He picks the best, most vicious, most... Some could say vile, but I would never say that about these young, wonderful gentlemen. But he just gets the best talent together to run roughshod over these companies. So he has Walter and Laura Sullivan together. Two absolute killers. Monsters of men. And if you get a chance to put a tag team together to go against the Young Bucks. So combined, they weigh about a half full bucket of water. And you're going against Walter and Laura Sullivan. I mean, I would say it always makes sense. Now, sure, they're, you know, scrappy and the people love them and blah, 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 blah. But let's just say that Paul Heyman always goes in with a plan. And you don't get to where Paul Heyman is in his business by not coming up with some pretty good plans. So I thought you put the scrappy guys against the absolute killers. The crowd's going to have an amazing show. They're going to love every second of it. And either way, we're going to come away with whoever wins the titles. Let's just say they earn it. Or if they're the Young Bucks, they cheered their way to get it. That's true. Scotty, you did have a question for Mr. Tony. Um, oh, good. about um, Scott Steiner. Yes, yeah, so are there any future plans for good old Scotty coming up here? See, with Scotty, he kind of comes and goes as he wants. He's got one of those... He's got enough clout in this business that when Scott wants to come in and kill someone in the ring, he's going to come in and kill someone in the ring. If he wants to take a little bit of time off and run his restaurants, he can take the time off and run his restaurants. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to be at stardom, but... I'm also not going to say he's not going to be there. So let's just say sometimes the card is subject to change. That's why that fine print's at the bottom. Did you uh, – this is a good question for you, Mr. Tony. Did you actually sign Scott Steiner, the, like the contract and all, at Shoney's? The contract might have been signed at Shoney's. See, sometimes with these bigger name stars – you have to placate their ego a little bit. And Scott will tell you himself that he has an ego. So he, you think he's the big bad booty daddy from Cincinnati while he's in the ring. He does the same stuff at his restaurant. So you go there. You go in the back room with him. You sit down. You have a good meal. And, of course, you talk shop. So as one businessman to another, you sit in a business setting. And I think it really helped ease him into the idea of coming into Future of Wrestling a promotion arguably with some of the best young talent in the world to show what the old guard can do. 
question and good answer. Yeah, way, way to congratulate yourself. Good job, Wayne. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Scotty, do you have any other questions before I ask my next one? Nope, I'm good. Okay, okay. Now, Mr. Tunney, is there any uh, new designs coming to the uh, FOW Championships? Well, I guess I can't hold back all the surprises. But, yes, there is going to be a little bit of a redesign coming to the titles. Now, I already love the belts that we have because I designed them myself. But I thought I could even top myself. And sometimes you don't want to sit on your laurels. So I went. I went to our belt manufacturer. I put some designs in his way. And it's going to seem familiar yet completely revamped at the same time. It's going to have that pure future of wrestling feel, just a feel of prestige, of prestige that's being made every day, while still be as glossy and as showy as a 20-pound piece of gold should be. So the people who wear it, they better not lose them. Let's put it that way. Are you also going to put on the back of the belt, Adam Cole was robbed on your uh, big boy title? One, Adam Cole can barely hold it around that puny frame of his. And two, I didn't see anything about him being robbed. Just the stipulations of the match happened to change. Much like the card, as I said before, is always subject to change. So it's not my fault he couldn't pull it together again. But flukes happen, flukes don't happen. Sometimes easy come, easy go. And at the end of the day, it turned out he just didn't deserve it, did he? Before you guys start arguing, okay, okay? All right, Mr. Tunney, one last question before we actually get into that big uh, discussion and in, in all that with the that one match in part one. Undertaker and Aleister Black inside Hell in a Cell. Why Hell in a Cell? Well, you have the dead man, the phenom, the icon, the man who, let's just face it, he almost pretty much invented Hell in a Cell. Versus the young upstart who's all dark and moody and gothic and blah, 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 blah. He's the one who wants to think, oh, I could be the new face of evil. I could be the new fear bringer. And don't get me wrong. The man is an absolute monster in the ring. So you're going to have a nice big old fashioned Haas match, even though Alistair mentally is not that big, but he fights like it. You put him in the most violent cage in all of professional wrestling. And you put it on the biggest show you have. I don't know why anyone would even question this being on the show. To me, it sounds like a no-brainer. It's put up or shut up for Alistair. It's the old guard with The Undertaker trying to hold his crown as the man. And what better way to do it than by not being able to run away from each other. Lock him in a cage and see who comes out first. If you can keep him inside the hell in a cell. That's another question for another day. But I know the cat's out of the bag. Uh, Fatal four away. Uh, Adam Cole, you know, uh, he won the championship to me fair and square. I think Scotty will agree. And then you restarted the match. He was holding tights. Come on now. You saw but, it. But you also restarted it because Adam Cole attacked, had Chad Gable attack before the match. Well, look, you, you see talent, and when you see talent trying to rob the chances away from other talent, you have to do advantages. You have to do redos. You have to make sure you're on an even playing field. So to me, I don't see anything that wouldn't say that Chad Gable should have his fair shot, of course. So that, to me, speaks of just putting on the match that people want to see. Why would you want to have a half-good Chad Gable, the most rugged, handsome, athletic, naturally gifted, overall one of the best stars we have in Future of Wrestling, why would you have him being sullied before a match by the likes of Adam Cole? So to me, I think you have to almost say, not that Mr. Gable needs a handicap, but you just make it a little more fair. Yeah, but the, the another question, though, you put Adam Cole literally in a three matches and one show in a gauntlet match between... You had uh, Drew Gulak, MJF, and then Nick Aldis. Why? Well, he wants to come around and say he was robbed and say he's the best and say he's the uncrowned champion, blah, blah, blah. Look, if you want to walk around without a belt and say that you're a champion, then why don't you just go out there and fight like a champion? So why don't I just give you three of the best that we have and you can prove it, which he didn't do because, of course, Nick Aldis came away the winner 
and you know a true champion would have been able to overcome those odds a true champion would have been able to fight back but obviously the nwa's best proved that it was better than fow's guy after getting attacked by six, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry what was that okay. I, I heard i heard a I'm little just, crackling I'm, on your side I'm, I'm just i'm just uh having a little bit of flu day today Oh, okay. I mean, it isn't taking away from your normal quality during the shows, so I, I couldn't tell that there's any difference. Uh, well, uh, I don't, I don't agree with putting Adam Cole in that situation. You banned the Undisputed Era from ringside, but right. the Why is National he have... Treasure was allowed. Look, they were they were allowed because they have a track record of being, let's just say, being well behaved, being respectable, putting out of a good face. <laughs> Um, one, everyone's on my pay in this company and including you. And two, uh, if you're going to put the undisputed era out there, why would you do that to the crowd? Why would you not just give them something to actually enjoy looking at? So you can't have too many people around the ring. It gets too crowded. It makes it rough for the people in the expensive seats. You don't want to take away their experience, do you? So if I had to do it, it had to come down to a toss-up, and you know what? National Treasure just happened to win it, so they got to have their guys out there. Now, maybe me saying banned was a little bit harsh, but I wanted to just make sure they knew that they had to stay back. It was for the good of the show. Let's put it that way. For the good of the show. Uh, I, I, I respectfully disagree, but... Um, you also respectfully have to learn to watch your mouth during our broadcasts, Mr. Bates, because during the course of the shows, I'm hearing some colorful language being dropped, especially by you, but then sometimes it rubs off on your, you know, slightly slower broadcast partner there. So, you have to really learn... Slower. I'm not done. So, Wayne, you have to learn to call yourself because he's easily impressionable. So, if you start doing it... Please, while this is the future, we have to show that we are a classy organization. We are a different kind of organization than what the little mud shows out there, what your Las Cruces of the world can get away with during their broadcasts. What we have to do is to show that we're on that different level while still retaining the pride and prestige of the past. We need to have our own Gordon Sully and Jim Ross together, which, I mean, right now we have Matt Stryker and Michael Cole, but we're it's a work in progress. But you guys... You can maybe get there one day. Michael Cole. Calling yourself classy. That's 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 really that's really the best thing you got? Really I mean, calling yourself classy? I mean from from what I've heard around the the yard, there's there's a lot less classy acts going on behind closed doors. I don't know what you're talking about. We have just sit down business conversations like any well run machine does. Really? Because I've I've been hearing text messages and calls from people around the company saying that you and Mr. DiBiase have been talking a little bit, a little bit too often, if I may ask. Well, let's put it this way. One, I don't know how one hears a text message because you can only read them. So you get, a, gonna you have get to a little call... ding, ding, ding thing, you know? You know well, that's called ringtone. Some could say that in alert, but I don't know what you're going to get out of it. And two... Mr. DiBiase is a respected manager, not only in his business, but in Future of Wrestling. So I talk to all the managers throughout the company. I have to talk to them, talk to them about my plans for the future matches, talk about the shows that they have to get on. I let them plead their case for their talent. So it would behoove me to listen to all the managers in order to give them all a fair shake for their talent, to put the best people in the best spot for the best shows. I don't see any issue with this. And also getting paid by them. Um, once again, much like you, which if you keep this up, it won't be happening for longer. I'm the president of this company. They all work for me. Oh, oh, oh. So, so, so you haven't seen the balance sheets then. You haven't seen your gross monthly income, right? I see all, I are, see all are the you, balance sheets. Are, are you sure? Because Sir, right, please. right, right here, it says that you've been getting, our attendance has been steadily decreasing a little bit <laughs> but but okay. but but our income is coming in at a rapid pace so 
fans are getting behind the merch. What can I say? It, but it's it's not coming from merch. Merch has been steady for pretty much this whole entire four months. But there's this extra money coming in from somewhere else. What what is this? It se- it seems kind of funny, don't you say that uh, you have some extra money lying around and it's coming in from somewhere else? Obviously, it's from advertising from shows. Advert- it's from buy rates. It's, it's from merchandise. It's, it's from the not, town we have in not, general. It's not. Everything everything is at a steady pace except for this one little area right here. That's It's showing this. I mean, you, you could see it yourself here if you want to, but you're getting extra amounts of money from other places here. I, I don't know if it's somebody else, but... Um, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting, don't you say? Look, like any good business, say, like, to put it in perspective, the Epic Store. Everyone seems to hate the Epic Store because it has private investors behind it. Sometimes, a big business, one that is busy and as far-reaching as us, sometimes we have some private investors as well. And to keep their anonymity, of course, it has to go into the books as other. So... They have a very vested interest in the future of this company. And if they want to throw some dollars here to maybe help get some shows in their cities, sometimes if they're the kind of people with that kind of clout, you have to appease them a little bit. But to imply that it'll be anyone under my regime who would be trying to pay me off seems a little untoward, doesn't it? Un- unless you have millions and millions and millions of dollars. Well, of course I do. I'm the president of Future of Wrestling, the or, hottest business company in the world right now, the hottest in all of professional wrestling. Or somebody else with millions and millions of dollars. Well, the town maybe, obviously has maybe, millions maybe, and millions of dollars because maybe, I give them money that they make. Maybe billions of dollars as well, if you if you get my idea. Well, I mean, it's hard to listen to you talk anyway without just trying to not vomit, so... I, I get every few words. I'm 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 holding back my vomit as well, sir. Well, you know what? It sounds like it. Now, do you do that every broadcast? Because that's the oh, way. No, it comes no, no, out no, of. no, 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 no. I've I've just it's a little been... weird. Do you have tummy? Do you have tummy issues? No, no, no. Tummy no, no. a little wrongly I've... before the shows. Do you get nervous? I'm yes, just here. I'm just because I'm because I, I know it. Mark Donovan being here, it puts your job directly at risk at this point. So I would be a little nervous too if I was you. No, Especially fine, but coming it's, to your present like this. But I'm I'm just getting a very wretched smell from the other side of the table for some reason. I don't know why. Well, we it's, know it's Wayne just, doesn't chat. Just, so, I well, mean, we, no, no, I've no, talked no. about I'm, that before. I'm looking at you, sir. So it's it's just this wretched smell of just BS that I'm getting over and over and over again. That I don't know why I'm getting the smell coming from there. It's just... Just... Evervescent, almost, and I'm I'm going to be truthful and honest. Donovan smells really great, but you, sir, are just this like horrid smell. I don't know why. I just I just associate it with BS for some reason. I oh wait, wait. just can't I just can't get it through my no mind. no it's fine no no I get it now. See that's the smell of success, which you obviously are just allergic to. So oh, I just, I can understand how. Day. Being here right now, it, it makes it tough on you. I know. Just you should have seen my old Japan contracts, then I guess, eh? Oh, good. The island people, wonderful. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, people really care about that. Oh, oh, the island people. Yeah, they're so so terrible. You know, uh, they're lovely people. Don't get me wrong. But oh, no, when it comes no, to you... the money coming in and around like that, eh, who really cares when they have their reach and they have their niche and they have their little goofball matches they put on between some matches that people don't even cheer for halfway through the match. Uh, I mean, if you call that fun, that's that's good. That's that's fine. Uh, I, I wouldn't call it fun if you're, you know, watching people like Stan Hansen and Bruiser Brody wrestle in the same ring as well. But if, if you want to call it funny wrestling, you, you, you can go right ahead with that. But well, just... it's funny that this is the future of wrestling and you keep bringing up these boomers to me. And most of them who are already dead at this point, too. So I don't see how the future has to worry about something like 
Mr. Stabbed in Puerto Rico. If he was as much of a bruiser, he probably would have been able to stop that. Let's be honest here. Well, I mean, I'm referencing that because I know my way around the ring as well. So if 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 you have a problem with me personally as well, I I would say you pick somebody and I pick somebody and we'll let them wrestle. And if if unless you're uh, too afraid to, you know, actually wrestle a real wrestler, then I mean, I'm just throwing out a suggestion here for you, sir. Uh, one, I'm not like the McMahons who are so desperate for ratings and, frankly, don't know how to put on a show anymore that they oh, have we, we, to we don't, we don't have to do there. it on television. We don't have to do it on television. We could do it, you know, right after the show and let all the boys around the ring and just let them watch it. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with that, too. Yes, you do enjoy the boys watching you, don't you? But while I would love to soil my hands, I just... I just can't bring myself to lower myself like this. Come on now. Now, if you lower want to have yourself. your little... Lo- lower yourself, really. Really lower yourself. Well, I mean... Of course, I lowered myself coming to this interview. I'm only doing it as a hype package for stardom. I mean, Ted DiBiase would say a little bit different, but, you know, it's it's just quite interesting that I'm making a suggestion here of maybe you picking a wrestler and me picking a wrestler and letting them go at it. I mean... What's the problem with that? Uh, you know what? I think that's perfectly fine. No, I'll. How about this? I'll even. I'll even raise the stakes. <laughs> okay. If if your person wins, I'll leave. I'll sign my contract saying I'm full of my release, and you can have my contract. You can have all my money, and I'll leave. You don't have to hear me anymore. You don't even have to look at me anymore. But if I win. I get to run a pay-per-view for one night. I mean, if you want to run this company in the ground, which, I mean, let's put it this way. It's not like you're going to win anyway. So, fine, sure, I'll give the baby his baba. You pick some wrestler. I'll go around and I'll find the obvious winner. And then we can have our little grudge match. And then I will never have to deal with you again. Oh, Oh, obvious winner. Obvious winner. Are you sure about that? Because I, I could think of a few good wrestlers out back that, you know, could beat almost anybody else on the roster. Why is it always the ones out back? Why can't it be the ones who, you know, well, because, get because, paid and because have we're locker backstage rooms at, and have the top billing so they have the top comfort in the company? You're going for the guys who have to smoke by the dumpster. This is this is ridiculous, frankly. Well, we're, we're, also, we're also in a studio here. At a wrestling show. So when I'm talking out back, I'm talking behind us, like right now, that could, you know, wrestle almost 24-7. And if you yes, want... Yes, I do so, sign the best town who can go whenever. Yes, that is very true. Yeah, so if you if you think I'm, I'm just talking up crap right now, then, hey, I mean, I'll, I'm putting my hand out right now. You shake it, we're good. All right. Well, do you have gloves? Can I at least put a glove on first before I shake your hand? I, I got hand I, I sanitizer. Actually, I actually had hand <sighs> sanitizer on beforehand, so. Ugh. Fine. Put her here. There we go. Ugh. Gross. So Should it's I official. It? Jim Tunney. Ugh. Man, this is this smell. It just won't come off. Why are you so sticky? And this is ridiculous. It's hand sanitizer, you idiot. Ugh, this is this is the most foul thing I've ever felt. Oh my God. Jim All right, can, can, I, can, guy can, I, can, can I get someone's guy. towel, please? I'm not going to wipe it off on this $10,000 suit. Someone get me a towel. More like 500 Anyways. So, so it's official, guys. Jim Tunney picks a guy. Scotty Bear picks a guy. Basically, almost winner take all here. Besides the company, you know. Oh, that's fine. And whatever guy decides to take your side, let's just say they should know what happens when contracts come up and who they have to talk to. So, yeah, get get someone to volunteer. We'll see how this goes. Oh, oh, I'll, I'll make sure. I'll make sure they know immediately. <laughs> okay. It's, it's going to be. It's going to be. You're going to love them. I. I promise you. Oh, they're gonna, I'm they're sure. They're going to bring. They're going to bring in the big bucks like you've always wanted. They're going to bring in the money. They're going to bring in that, you know, 
the money you've always been looking for. Oh, you know, God. the ones that you've been disputed Eric Dork or something like that. Oh. No, 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 no. But you know, like all that money you've been asking for backstage with Ted DiBiase and Paul Heyman and all those other guys too. <laughs> I mean, that's been that's been something that I would offer as free to give to you. Free money. It's going to be perfect. You know damn well Paul Heyman don't pay anybody. Uh, he's been... Hey, For once, Wayne, know that. you have a point. You don't know that. You don't know that. I think history has shown. Well, history has shown, but... I do love me some Paul. Let's be honest here. He's one of the finest men that I have the pleasure of working with on a constant basis. But I wouldn't be trusting getting my paychecks from him. I think he'd agree with that. He's a He's a sporting chap. I mean, and plus, I pay him, so I don't have to worry about this anyway. Now, maybe he's paying you on the side to spout this gibberish, which I would oh, have, to he, have he, a. He's been paying nice. Me. I, I, can, I can, I can, I can, I can show you my bank accounts and my bank statements saying yes, that. Yes, I'm sure it's pathetic. Has. I'm sure oh, it's oh, very it's sad. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. Maybe you should have talked to the old Japan wrestlers that have seen the bank account as well, because I've been doing myself real good with money. So if you want to just, you know, talk up talk. Then I, I am going to assure you. I am going to guarantee you that my boy is going to win. Doing okay? himself real good with money. Are you some one of these cam people on the internet who needs the extra cash? I know you're no, hurt. No, no. I know no, you're no, no. sad. I know no, you no, don't no. have any kind of self respect. No, no, no. God, no, my no, hand is still sticky. You see, I've actually been able to save up my money and actually do something with that money and maybe Cal. actually invest Cal. that money. Shit, 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 shit. I need my towel. Thank you. Finally, God. So, so can we just ten more seconds? You were fired. I just want you to know that. Can we just say that uh, we're gonna have me and Mark Donovan doing the commentary, and you two at ringside uh, with the headset on, and you know, during that match, is this what what's gonna happen? I mean, I guess it's only fair. The last thing I need to do while putting someone out of his misery is to have him audibly be heard crying and tears running down his face during the course of what will <laughs> arguably be a very short match. So, yes, it's fine. He can he can have a break on he can have a little smoke break during his match during his last show ever for Future of Wrestling. Perfectly fine with me. Well, I'm saying uh, you, you'll both be on commentary with me and Mark. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll be doing call on the action. Oh, this will be good. Yes, yes, that's perfectly fine. I would actually prefer that. I'm, oh, I... I cannot wait to hear what you think of my wrestler and how he's going to actually win the match. It's going to be fantastic. Yes, I'm, gonna, I'm sure your trash so bag well. from the mud shows will be able to put on. He'll he'll try to do his very best. I'm sure he'll try to really fight and claw and get the crowd behind him. I'm sure he's going to be. I'm sure he's going to be that classic little baby face, isn't he? No, I'm, <sighs> no, no, he's not. I I'm going to guarantee you he's not. He is going to be oh, the best. Oh, God. Oh, it's going to be the Necro Butcher. That's all you can afford. All right, fine. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, man. You you dare underestimate my ability to talk. You, you get, definitely. You get, I, 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 have, I have good people. You, I have good people. You're getting superhuman? Is that yours? I know he's making oh, no. now. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Superhuman's actually a nice guy. I've actually met him. But yeah, he's actually more entertaining than you'll ever be, too. Oh, Actually, I would love to get him just, here. Just like you've been in this interview. Oh, yes, you've been so, so entertaining. I mean, you have you know entertainment because, I mean, you run a promotion. But uh, you're, you're, you, the most entertaining thing you've been doing tonight is actually entertaining me with your BS that you've been saying for most part. So One, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Not just any it's promotion. Great. It's the future, the future of wrestling. Hell, until some unfortunate things happen, Hibiki Pro is running strong too. I've run through a gamut of different promotions, and right now Future of Wrestling just happens to be the baby that I'm just working on right now. Maybe one day I'll get bored and start another promotion. I can do it whenever I want. I've got all the time and money in the world to do these things. And again, I have all the talent in the world and the connections to make it happen. So, run your mouth, and instead of appreciating the opportunity you've been giving, you are just continually squandering it, so... I'm a sporting gentleman, and lucky for you, I'm sporting. So I'll do this little this little pitter patter match of yours, and at the end of the day, you're gonna lose your job because it probably would have happened anyway. But here, fine, have your it, match. It's 
I'm not going to lose it. I, I there are not I'm enough not towels in the world to get this sting off of my hand. This well, is the I mean, last time I shake hands with a pauper, I swear. I mean, I'm betting you've been saying that a lot to your boyfriends as well. So it's it's obvious. It's just obvious that it's going to be just a fantastic night for both you and I to watch as my guy wins. It's going to be fantastic. I'm guaranteeing a win. Okay. Sure. Let's just... All right. Sure. All right. I, 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 I just can't it's... even try anymore. I just can't even try with you. So yeah, have your hope. Yeah, I'll give you a little. You have what? A few weeks left. You can have your hope. That's fine. <laughs> Having hope. Uh, that's that's funny. I would be saying the same thing to you, but I mean, you you have no hope. It's gonna it's gonna be easy for me to win. And yes. My, and I my have no win. hope. I just have piles of money and promotions. Yes, Hal. Yes, I'm very surely don't have any hope. You're correct. Oh yeah, your your promotion that only runs in Washington D.C. and nowhere else is is that the promotion you're talking about? I mean, you you say you have all this money, but why can't we go to other places besides Washington D.C.? I mean, it's kind of funny to me. It's kind why, of funny. Why would we have to when we're in the capital? If you run the capital, you basically can run not only the country but all the wrestling from the capital. So why would I not want to give myself all these advantages by talking to the people who run the most powerful country in the world? Maybe I'm hobnobbing. Maybe they want to talk to the man who runs the most powerful wrestling promotion in the world. Maybe they come to me. So I don't have to tell you the details of any of this because you want to understand it anyway. But when you get at a certain point in the business world, people talk to each other. So maybe maybe I don't want to take the plane rides every other day. Maybe I just want to sit back in my extreme lap of luxury over here as I sit and just put together continually the best product in all of professional wrestling. Oh, so so the product that's only in Washington, D.C., though. You, you don't you don't want to share the wealth with everybody else. <sighs> you just I mean, don't I mean, you could, you get could, it, you could, do you, Scott? Oh, I don't get it. Well, I mean, you could go to, like, you know... Los Angeles and maybe sell out the whole entire place, but I mean, you get Washington, lung cancer. No, oh, thank you. Oh, 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 not Los Angeles. Why, why not go to North Carolina? I mean, <sighs> that's that's going to be a good one. South that's, Carolina, that's under New three York, feet of water right now. No, thank you. Uh, Florida, Excellent. you could do Florida. Florida, too many old people. They don't leave their house for wrestling promotions. Waste of time. Texas, I don't care, I don't care what Dusty and his little his little dusty finishes could do for crowds of fifty people. Okay, fine. So, what was so the other ones you said? Texas. Oh, 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 no. You don't have a comeback for that one, huh? Huh? I need a comeback. Like, I need a bunch of inbred hicks coming to my shows, and they're not going to understand it anyway. They like their little punchy punch. They don't understand what real pro wrestling is about. They let the god. They. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> You, you don't. Ah, you, I'm just Toronto? choking on my rage here. I'm choking. Toronto. On Toronto. Do, 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 Canada, really? I mean, I'll go for the poutine and Chez Paris, one of the finest adult establishments in possibly the world. But, well, actually, that's in Montreal. Toronto has nothing. That's junk. No. Now, if you said Montreal, I would have given you a chance, but it's too late now because then it would have been my idea anyway. So, well, it's still your idea. It's way. still your idea, but I mean. You you won't do it because I mean you you like your hometown and are not willing and able to you know go to other places and let them enjoy your product that you know you've worked so hard on. I mean, they're knocking down the door to come to me. You let the small oh, piles of dirt come to the big pile of dirt. You don't do it the other way around. Oh, 